Hello and welcome to sim.bc where right now it is about 0036 in the morning. Yes, around middle of the night. It's one of them early mornings again. Sorry, I'm sorry mate, but well it doesn't matter for you. But still it's going to be out around, well, I would say 5 to 6 because of this internet. Yeah. I know it's the best isn't it and just to stress that point right because I feel like basically just in general I can't stress that point enough but it's really really irritating not being at your own place when you're making videos as I said before you know it takes me 12 hours and stuff like that to upload but not only that you know me lighting problem I had a bit of a lighting problem when I got there not only the thing that well I had a lighting problem to begin with mm -hmm, that's a problem but when I fixed it I fixed it with a lamp. I know. Some people are going to sit there and be like, well, yes, of course you did. And some people are going to be like, oh my days, that is brilliant. I was using the umbrellas, you know, white on the inside, reflecting light from the ceiling roof and all of that. And well, no, I, no, I, I used, used the lamp. I know, I know. Quite unimaginative. I know. But the problem is, right, just in order to stress this point enough, it broke. Yeah, it's true. It broke. And just the just the notion that I don't know where to go <clears throat> if I want to find a new lamp that's really irritating <laughs> because well I don't live here full time so obviously I'm not going to know where everything is so I had to ask somebody like hey my lamp is broke where can I find a new one and usually when I'm at my place I know exactly where they are there are none because I don't have spare lamps but I would know that there are none here I need, had to go and say like, hey, where, where do you keep them? You know, where do you keep them lamps? And they were just like, oh, here you go. Here's another one, which was all fine and dandy. And it wouldn't have been solved if I was at my own place. But still, I don't know where it is. Pisses me off. Pisses me right off, right? Yeah, it's kind of irritating. But that's not why you're here. Now, is it? No, because you're here because of the title, mate. Them titles, right? And I know that we've been discussing loot boxes, we've been discussing gambling, we've been discussing kind of free to play and buying the game in this pay to play mentality before in three days ago's video, if I'm correct. And those, but then we had the idea, of, well, we had the perspective on gambling. And in my opinion, right, mates, this was a right good topic to talk about because it's something that actually intrigues me and something that I'm very interested in in my spare time outside of business. Well, and then we have the mentality that if you're favoring paying over playing, then this might <clears throat> cover up or cover over, go over, transfer, so to say, over to your daily life. Maybe for someone usually paying in a game to get ahead, then maybe you're someone looking for them shortcuts. If you're someone playing the game, experiencing the game, and being better at the game in order to conquer the game, and getting your rewards that way, then maybe in the business world you're someone who actually want to work yourself from the bottom to the top. Don't take any shortcuts, mates. There's no shortcuts to becoming the CEO. Now, I'm sure there are, but you get the idea, you get the gist, that kind of mentality is, wor is at work there. So basically what we're going to talk about, talk about today, mates, is pay or play. Yes, exactly. Are you favoring one for the other? And especially when you talk about this, the first example that always comes up, comes up is, well, free to play games, paying for the game. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine in today's society, right, when we're having all of the mobile games, that's all, you know, not all, but mainly many of them are free to play. You have so much content and yet you expect me as a game developer to go out and spend my hard on cash on a game. When I have these many, so many games that are good actual games that are first free to play. Why do you want me to play, you know, pay for a game? It's ludicrous now, isn't it? It's mind. And then you have the other side of the coin, people saying, well, I'm paying for the game, so I know that I actually get the full entire game, you know, Shadow of Mordor, what? No, uh, except Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> no, but I'm actually paying for the game, so I expect to get the game. Why should you, yeah, I know that there are many games that are free to play, but why put yourself through the trial and error of finding a free to play game that is actually good? I know that there are stuff like League of Legends or Dota, there are good free to play games out there. 
But if you want something else, you want something from a different genre that isn't that explored yet, you need to get in there. Or if you don't have the understanding, for instance, if you're going to move into the MOBA industry, to the MOBA gaming uh, scene, so to say, and you don't know about League of Legends or Dota, just imagine how many MOBA games you need to go through that are free to play before you find the one that's good. If you're on the other side and buy a game, you know you're going to get a respectable product, or at least that's the mentality, the thing that you assume. On the other hand, if you're going to take an objective view between the two, you can say, well, it's a game, it's a game that is published and released in some way or fashion, so should be a good game because people behind gaming should be passionate when they're actually developing the game, so it shouldn't be a problem to choose one of them to begin with. And if that is the case, well, then you should obviously move to the free-to-play one because it should be equally good anyway. Yes, in theory, that should be the case. Now, is it the case though? No, because we have some things called, you know, a business plan. A business model. How is the free-to-play game supposed to make money? I mean, we have the pay for, or rather, we have to pay the game so you can play the game. You know, you pay a certain amount to play the game. That's their business model, right? They're saying, well, you're buying for the game. That should support your game. That should support yourself playing the game because we're getting the cash so that we can support the service so that you can play the game. However, if you're seeing an F like a free to play game, how are they going to make money? Are they going to make you watch ads? Are they going to Im like implement ads into the gameplay? Are they going to be heavily sponsored? Or are they going to be very restricted in what they've done because they didn't have that much financial need or financial assets in order to actually make the game to begin with but you know we're saying quality is the same in both do they need to put microtransaction in some kind of in-game shop in order to actually make any money to at all and if so and this isn't actually regarding the quality in either one of them because in a free-to-play game are you saying that you can buy stuff in the in-game shop and then you can get ahead of other players which is you can pay for something and get ahead in the game or can do you pay for something and get cosmetics now i would argue yet again since i know of league of legends in league of legends you can pay to buy skins same in heroes of the storm same in hearthstone you can well bear with me on that it's the same in league of legends and heroes of the storm you can pay to get skins cosmetic stuff right in order to get ahead but you don't get ahead really but you get ahead of the curve because you can say that well you could actually play the game and you can fulfill the requirements in order to get these skins that is true you could do that you can also you can also pay for it and here comes in the mentality well should i pay or should i play if it takes if they are going to make their money so let's say from skins and cosmetics then they probably have implemented them in such a way that it's a waste of time to be honest right i mean behind closed doors here it's probably they're probably implemented it so that it's going to be kind of look be viewed as a waste of time to actually achieve this without paying for it but then the quality of the game the actual gameplay is going to stay the same right you know you, you with me and then you have the different kind of game where you have like hearthstone where you're buying a loot box or overwatch for that matter where you're buying a loot box but in overwatch you're buying a loot box in order to get cosmetics and in Heroes of the Sto and Heart of the Sto Heartstone, sorry, oh my days, that was three times, right? In and in Heartstone, you're actually buying to get a loot box in the form of a card pack where you can get different rarities of cards that you then can utilize in order to climb the ladder. The ladder, sorry. Then we have buying the full game and you expect to get the entire game in it. And you know, except Shadow of Mordor, but there are always going to be exceptions. But then you have the problem when you're buying a game. And it's multiplayer. Let's say it's multiplayer based. Let's say Overwatch, right? And you're playing the game and you're saying, well, I bought the game. I should have access to everything in the game. Isn't that the case? And they're like, yes, but simultaneously, this is an online playing game. This is a multiplayer game. We need servers to sustain this. So even though you bought the game, that's basically is saying, well, I bought quality. I bought a quality product that I know going to work. But now we need to actually maintain the servers and that costs money. We need to develop additional material for the game to keep the multiplayer gaming idea going, to get, keep the community fresh and going, to get the gameplay fresh and going. So we need more cash. So we need you to in some way buy stuff in the game to actually, you know, 
being able to keep playing it so that we can keep supporting the multiplayer variety and that's the thing that when you're buying a game if you buy a single player game you're probably going to have access to everything and you won't have the option to buy even though you know Shadow of Mordor but let's take Shadow of Mordor then for the perfect example in the buying the game and then being able to buy stuff in the game as well are you paying or are you playing what are you favoring here because you bought the game to get a single player experience yet you have loot boxes inside of the game that you can throw cash on so that you can actually get stuff ahead of curve so to say within the game world now are you the kind of person who say well that's all fine and dandy let's throw some extra cash in there and let's get rich in game or are you someone who's saying well there's a plethora of content here that will span over years maybe you know depending on how the designers have designed the game this game will sustain me for years if I don't spend a penny on it. What's your opinion there? What's your view? Are you paying or are you playing? So what should we take out of this in order to lay this new serve for the next video? Well, it is basically this. No matter what you're playing, even if it's a free to play game or a bot game, there are certain aspects of paying whilst you continue playing the game in order to get ahead of curve either if it's going to be cosmetics that you will unlock either way but it's going to take a long time because that's just the business model of the company do you recognize that and then pay for it in order to sustain your own play or do you play the game and you say i'm not going to spend an additional penny on this or any penny or dime actually because it was a free to play example <laughs> simultaneously you have it in the buy the game example where you can say well am i favoring paying for a game in order to play it and if it is a multiplayer game which i bought do i pay stuff do i pay for stuff in the game after i already bought it in order to sustain my own play but that's kind of the same thing as free to play so i would just say that basically right for either part of the industry either if you buy the game or you just download it because it's free to play there are going to be points in time when you need to consider Am I going to pay in order to get ahead of curve or am I just paying in order to keep on playing to sustaining my own well to sustain the play to sustain the actual game this is something that I would like you to comment on what are you and how do you do it how do you view it if you spend money on the game and then we will get into this tomorrow as well now that we have established that this can happen in both sides of the industry either if you just download it or if you actually pay for the game have a nice one mates and i'll see you tomorrow